to laugh in church, man. I love being a part of church where you can laugh and have fun, have a good time. Church should be full of life, right? It should be. And I can promise you, cathedral is full of life. Well, I'm super excited about this Why Easter series. And here's why I'm excited. If you've been around here long enough to know what I mean when I say Christmas at Cathedral. How many of you have ever experienced Christmas at Cathedral? We take the entire month of December and blow up every single weekend leading up to that Christmas Eve service. Well, now, basically, we're doing Easter at Cathedral. We're doing the same thing. We're taking the story of Easter. It's so hard to really unpack Easter in a single weekend. And so we thought, how can we take every single weekend, make it big, and just really slowly unwrap our story. And so that's what we're going to kick off today. And of course, when I talk about Easter, a lot of people think of a lot of different things. You know, you might remember when you were a little kid, different memories. Maybe you remember going to church on Easter when you were a little kid. Maybe you remember painting and coloring the Easter eggs. If you're like me, you immediately think of food. So I think of Easter dinner, dinner, what I look forward to on Easter. But a lot of people think of a lot of different things. And this young man has a a kind of a unique take on what Easter brings back to his memory. Take a look. Am I enough? It really is sort of a nagging question that a lot of people struggle with. It's that sense that there's something that's just not complete in my life. There's something missing. And a couple of weeks ago, we took a look at a verse in the Bible that describes how you and I are made. We are living beings created by God. And this is how it describes us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. It says, Now may the God of peace and harmony set you apart, making you completely holy, and may your entire being, spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless. And so this verse is showing us that we are made up of a spirit and a soul and a body. And we have this graphic that we love to use because it just makes so much sense. And we sort of say it this way. You are a spirit and you have a soul and you live in a body. And your soul is your mind and your will and your emotions. And your body is just this temporary vessel here on earth. And, and contained in this, what God wants is that we would have him in our life and be so full of God that there would be this overflow of life that comes off of us and he wants to lead us and guide us as we live our life but we have to acknowledge the fact that there's always a period of time for me it was the first 25 years of my life where God is not in the picture and when you remove God from the picture it's so easy to understand why people can feel that something's missing because something is missing spiritually there's something that is not there so this helps you understand Why somebody can be surrounded by people that absolutely love them and yet feel totally all alone. It helps you to understand why somebody can be so driven for fame or fortune or wealth or material, what anything to try to fill that gap, but none of it ever does. And so if you're here this morning and you're like, man, I'm, I'm very aware of that in my life. Can I just say, Can I just validate your feelings and say, I understand. I mean, 25 years of my life, I still remember what that felt like, and it's a horrible feeling. And so I empathize with you, but there's some good news, and the good news is you don't have to stay that way. And I promise you, before this service is over, you'll have the opportunity to do what a lot of us in this room have done, which is invite God to come into our life and have a relationship with us. And when we do, it fills that spirit up, and so now we have this life with God. But if we're honest, a lot of us still have that nagging sense that something still just is not quite right. I love the way John Eldridge puts it. He says, for most of us, life feels like a movie that we've arrived to 30 minutes late. Like there seems to be something really important going on, but I I can't make sense of it. Like who's the good guys? Who are the bad guys? And what in the world is going on? Well, it's the same for us. In order for us to understand what's going on in our life today, we have to know our whole story. So we're beginning today in the beginning. We're going back to the very beginning when there was only God. So as the lights are coming down, can you just begin to imagine with me there being nothing but God. No universe, no earth, no creation. Everything was just dark and void. And then God 
begins to speak into existence our universe and our world. Now, don't move too quickly beyond this point right here. I mean, just allow the wonder and the majesty of God to just, to just settle into your hearts. We move so quickly sometimes that we miss the nuances of our story and, and how God came to even think of creating us. See, there's, there's a reason that you and I are so drawn to the beauty of God's creation. And that really is a crucial part of our story that most people don't understand. You see, all of this, God spoke into existence. And as beautiful as it was and majestic as it was, there did not exist a being that could acknowledge that and worship God for that and honor what God had done. And so God does something that we can't fathom or even imagine. 
He steps out of eternity, comes into our dimension of space and time, steps onto this earth, walks into the Garden of Eden to create mankind, formed by his own hands. We were not spoken into existence. God formed mankind out of the dust of the earth and then breathed his spirit life into mankind. And now for the first time ever, there was a living being that was created in the image of God. You see, all of this creation, this beauty, it all reflects the glory of God. You and I, we are image bearers of the glory of God. We carry within us God's glory, God's DNA. He has placed it on the inside of us and there is no other being in all creation like you and I. Can you imagine what it must have been like for those who were first awakened, the first of mankind to awaken in God's perfect creation. Here, in this uncorrupted, original design of God's creation, we find our purpose. You have Adam, who is now whole and complete and lacking nothing, and he welcomes Eve into his world, gives everything he is of himself for her, for her benefit. And likewise, Eve, totally whole, nothing lacking, beauty beyond beauty, now submits her life to Adam in a way where she gives completely of herself for his benefit. And now watch this. Adam and Eve, man and woman, unspoiled, 
God's original design, join together in a powerful unity, now representing the full spectrum of the incredible wonder and majesty and glory of God. And they bring that glory to bear on creation for its benefit. With nothing lacking, with this overflowing of God, everything flows out from Adam to Eve, from Eve to Adam. The two become one and it flows out and affects everything around them. It doesn't make sense to you that with this being God's original design and the strength and the power of it, of why there is such an attack on the family. Because you do understand this is still God's design today. And the man shall leave his mother and father and cling to his wife, and the two become one flesh. And there is nothing else on the face of the planet more powerful than a man and a woman fully alive in God, united in marriage, that bring the image and the glory of God to bear on all creation around them. You see, for you and I, It's hard for us to imagine this because we don't live in God's perfect creation. Romans 8.20 says this, For against its will, the universe itself has had to endure the empty futility resulting from the consequences of human sin. So Satan comes to Adam and Eve in the garden And through deception and lies, he lures them away. He convinces them to sin against God and form an unholy alliance with him. He convinces them that they don't need God to fill that place in their life, that they can fill that place on their own. And they believed him. And the moment they did, they became spirit, soul, and body with no God. And immediately you can see the effects. Now, with no overflowing of the Spirit of God, now Adam needs to find this value, this purpose in something. And maybe he tries to get it from Eve, but becomes so painfully aware that she is not enough now to fill that place in him. So maybe now he turns elsewhere to his work. Maybe he finds his value in his achievements and what he can do. Maybe it's found in the wealth or the things that he can accumulate. In the same way for Eve, perhaps she starts trying to get something from Adam, but what they both need, they can't give to each other. Only God can fill that role. So maybe now Eve looks elsewhere. Perhaps it's pouring all that she has into her children or pouring all that she is into a career. And perhaps for both of them, maybe now they begin to look to another person, totally unaware that there is a design, there is a force behind this. It's the enemy of God. It's my enemy. He's your enemy. This doesn't happen by accident. This happens by design. The enemy comes into God's perfect creation and he tries to distort and dismantle because there's nothing on this earth more powerful than the man and the woman united in Christ and raising a family of Christ-like children who see modeled for them. This is how we bring the glory of God into this world. And it's a sad state of affairs. But I do have good news. And the good news is that it doesn't have to stay this way. The good news is that there is a hope. There's a hope that you and I have to look forward to. And I want to take a moment just to paint this picture of hope for you because this is the same hope that has been spoken of in the Bible from the very beginning and we find it all throughout. And sometimes as a church, we we kind of miss this piece of the story because this is a future hope that we need to know and we need to understand and we need to set our hearts on it. And it has everything to do with this original creation. The very next verse in Romans chapter eight says, but now with eager expectation, all creation longs for freedom from its slavery to decay and to experience with us the wonderful freedom coming to God's children. What is that freedom? 
Jesus spoke of it in Matthew. Peter said to Jesus, we've given up everything to follow you. What will we get? And Jesus replied, I assure you that when the world is made new, and now we have that glimpse of the future hope coming for us. It goes all the way back to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 65. Look, I am creating new heavens and a new earth and no one will even think about the old ones anymore. Be glad, rejoice forever in my creation. Forever in my creation. Isaiah 66, as surely as my new heavens and earth will remain, so will you always be my people with a name that will never disappear, says the Lord. And Peter, a man who walked with Jesus. Now Jesus has gone and he's gone back to heaven, back to the Father. And Peter is encouraging the church. And he says, look, I know that things are bad all around us. I know this is not the world that God created, but we are looking forward to the new heavens and new earth. He has promised a world filled with God's righteousness. No more evil, no more sickness, no more disease, shame, pain. God does away with evil and wickedness forever and ever. And you and I now get to experience something in eternity that a man by the name of John was allowed to see in a vision from God. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared. This is so important to understand where we are in the story because Jesus is coming is so multifaceted and multi-purposed for our lives today. If you could take our broader overarching story and if it was a three-act play, it would be this. Act one would be the world that God created. And then act two would be the violation of the world God created. And act three would be the restoration of the world God created. That is our future hope. So we've got both of these things going on. There is a future hope that we need to be very much aware of that is not some, some like this room right here, cloud-filled, white place where you don't know anybody and you don't know what's going on. It is a new heaven and a new earth, a new creation, nature, going back to the days of Adam and Eve in perfection for you and I to enjoy forever. And not only that, but this whole idea of being image bearers of God, the original design of God, now, because of what Jesus did on that cross for you and I, we can once again enter into that promise with God and that relationship with God and once again become those image bearers of God. Jesus said this in the book of Matthew. He said, I will give you the keys of heaven's kingdom realm to forbid on earth that which is forbidden in heaven and to release on earth that which is released in heaven. In other words, Jesus said, if you will open up your life to me and invite me in, I will come in and when you look at body, soul, and spirit, you will now have the spirit of my heavenly Father with you. And now once again, even in this broken, distorted world that is full of all the, all the enemy's delights of shame and pain and sickness and disease, you are not entering into it passively. You come in now as image bearers of God. You and I are called to be salt and light in a dark world. We're not called to sit back and wait and just, and t you know, and just do nothing until the day comes when it's all taken care of. No, we are to go into this world as full image bearers of God. So full of God that now he overflows because it's not just about restoring the world for the future, which is our future hope. God wants to restore your life today. This is about the restoration of you. You're not insignificant. You're not some tiny infinitesimal piece of the story. God says in his word that he knows you intimately more than anyone, that he knit you together in your mother's womb and that you came to this life with a supernatural plan and purpose ordained by God. But from the moment you were born, you were born under this assault of the enemy, 
to try to come and steal your purpose, to try to come and take your value away, to try to come and wreak so much havoc in your life that you would never possibly even consider opening your heart up to God. That is his desire. But because Jesus Christ came, because he came and he died on the cross and he paid the price for our sins, for you and me, Now we can be fully, immediately restored to God if we just open up our heart. And when we do that, he begins to restore our life and we become so full that now it begins to overflow into those around us. Your spouse, your children, your co-workers, your friends, they just start to notice, man, there's just something different about you. And it's God's restoration working in your life. So if you're here this morning and and you've never taken that step, if you've never understood the story and you weren't aware that this was something that you needed to proactively say, yes, I need God in my life and invite him in. Perhaps you thought he would just come in and do whatever he wants, but he doesn't. He asks permission. He says he stands at the door of our heart and knocks. And if we'll simply open up the door, then now he will come in and he begins the restoration. It's not about your willpower. It's not about you being stronger or smarter or faster. It is about you simply saying yes to the spirit of God and allowing him to come into your heart and to begin to change your life and fill that great emptiness that has just burdened you for so long. And so if you're here this morning and you've never done that and you're like, man, i got to get on board with that, I want to give you an opportunity to do that now. And the way we're going to do that is I'm going to ask everyone in the room to bow their heads and close their eyes just to respect the privacy of everyone that's here. And if you're here and you need to take that step this morning, I'm simply going to ask if you would just raise your hand and just let me make eye contact with you. And then once I do that, you can put your hand back down. Anybody that needs to take that step and invite him in. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Up in the balcony. Yes, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you, sir. Thank you, young man. Thank you so much. So beautiful day. It's a beautiful day when the Spirit of God just knocks on the door of your heart. And it's such an easy step to take. There's nothing difficult about it all. It's just a matter of saying yes. So before we pray, is there anybody else that hadn't raised your hand that I didn't see or I didn't acknowledge? Thank you. And let me say to everybody online that's watching, this is for you as well. Just a simple act of raising your hand. And and we're about to pray a prayer. Everybody in the room is going to repeat this prayer after me. But for everyone that raised your hand in the room and online, this prayer is your prayer. This day is your day that the Spirit of God comes in. And He begins to so fill your life that now restoration begins to happen. And so I'm going to ask everyone in the room, if you would, just pray after me. Father God, thank you for your son, Jesus. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. I believe you raised him from the dead and that he is alive today. And I need you in my life. So Lord Jesus, Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Begin my restoration today so that I can help restore those that are around me. I thank you for this new life and I thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we give those guys a big hand? Well, I hope what we've done so far kind of helps you understand. It always bothered me as as a young Christian when I first got saved, and I'll, I'll never forget 
reading the account of creation in the Bible, and then here comes Adam and Eve, and they're in this perfect paradise, and I'm thinking, I'm very imaginative and visual, so I've got it all pictured in my mind. I'm thinking, how awesome would it have been to have lived in paradise, and then the very next thing that happens is they get kicked out. I'm like, wait a minute, what? I mean, this, so that just goes away? It's just gone? We just lost it? You know, we had it, and then because two knuckleheads, that's not nice to say, <laughs> two people, like my Uncle Frank, decided just to do their own thing, and now we all lost it. It's like the big bully coming in and kicking the train off the train tracks, and nobody puts it back on. It took so long for me to realize and understand, no, 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 no. It's not lost, because that very day when that happens, God said, oh, I got something coming. I got something coming. I'm going to make this right. I'm going to make this right, and I'm going to make it so right, it'll never be wrong again. Amen and amen. And so that's why it's so important for us to understand the creation story. Well, we've got an awesome song. It is an old song. You are going to so know this song. When my girl, Misty, starts to belt this song out, it is an old, familiar song, but it does such a great job of acknowledging these two positions, one being the fact that through God's grace, we can be restored in our life today and be a part of restoring life for others. But then also that there is a hope coming, a time coming when we'll never again have to deal with anything wicked or evil. And for all eternity, we will spend it with God and God's creation forever and ever. Amen. So let's worship together. Amen, amen. Two different groups of people. For those of you that raised your hand either online or in the room, a great next step for you. We would love to know about that. Let us know through social media. You can call us here. You can email us. Please let us know about that. And the best step you can do is coming to our growth track. You can come next Sunday, 1030, right back here in the chapel. The purpose of the growth track is to help you figure out the road ahead. Obviously, if you're like me and you didn't know anything about God and you just said yes to him, you're like, okay, so like now what? So that is going to give you that roadmap of how to begin this incredible journey with God. And we would love to have you join us. And for the rest of you, can I just say and bless you with the fact that you're image bearers of God. You're not, you're not just reflecting God's glory, okay? All of creation does that. You bear his image. You're made in his image. And so now you go out and you bear the image of God, who he is in your family, to your children, to your spouse, to your co-workers, in your neighborhood. So go out and be the best dadgum God image bearers that you can be right where, don't let the darkness, in this, God says the darkness in this world cannot put out my light. He so fills you with so much light and life, the darkness can't extinguish it. So don't let the darkness touch it. You just get your little light man and you march right on up in there and say, I'm bringing the glory of God up in this place right here, all right? Amen, amen, amen. Lord bless you guys. Have a great weekend.